Hello everybody and welcome to Promise Gaming and Plague Inc. Evolved! A few months ago, the Shadow Plague scenario was introduced into the main game, and on the day of release I created a video showcasing my strategy to beat it on Mega Brutal. That video has since been reviewed over one and a half million times and brought a lot of people to this channel and I'm thrilled to have you along. However, some of those viewers have been telling me for the last couple of months that this scenario has apparently been rebalanced and they are dubious as to whether the strategy still works. I haven't found any evidence of any rebalancing in the patch notes, that's just what people have told me. So I decided to do a little bit of testing and found that, uh, well, the strategy works just fine, but I did discover that if I make some very slight adjustments, I can consistently get five biohazards on Mega Brutal for the Shadow Plague. And that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. A slightly revamped strategy to consistently get five stars on Mega Brutal every single time. Now the last time I did this video on the Shadow Plague was the day of release. It was brand new, nobody knew what was going on, so I spent a long time explaining every single mechanic behind the scenario, what I was doing, why I was doing it, how it worked, and it was a pretty long video. About half an hour, a lot of people complained that it was way too long. Well, now that the scenario has been out for a while, I'm going to assume that you already have at least a little bit of understanding of how the Shadow Plague works. If you don't, you are welcome to see my previous video, so we should be able to go a little bit faster, and hopefully that will appease several of you. The genes that we are going to be using are Harvester to generate extra DNA when consuming people. An alternative is to use Brawler, so it doesn't cost any DNA, but I believe that the points generated from Harvester will outweigh the points saved by using Brawler. Budget Bat, I think, is a must. The Vampire Flight ability does not cost any DNA. We'll be flying around a lot, so that should save me a fair bit, and also make sure we never get stranded. Aquasite and Extremophile are pretty safe choices, and lastly, we'll pick which doctor we will heal faster when in our lair. Uh, out of the bunch here, there's not really a lot of good picks. Mad Scientist, if you want to play enough to unlock it, is acceptable. It just makes it a little bit easier, so you don't have to spend time popping bubbles and you can walk away. But as far as actual performance, I think Witch Doctor is going to be the best. But it should be worth noting that you can probably beat this with my strategy without any genetics at all. Day one, you probably can beat this on Mega Brutal and get five stars. You just have to be wary of running out of points. That's it. Let's go ahead and play on Mega Brutal. The default name is Nox Eternus. And we will start off in Greenland as we did before. I don't see any reason to change that up. It still works. So the first thing we are going to go do is go to Vampires and we are going to pick up a couple of levels of Blood Rage so that we can start devouring the population. If you're not familiar, this is the ability here we can use. We're going to start killing everybody in Greenland and generating DNA as a result. My goal from the start is going to be getting as much Blood Rage as possible. Three levels is usually about as much as I can expect while I'm in Greenland. Then I'm going to pick Therianthropy so that I will be able to fly once I have finished devouring the population. Uh, we have attracted some attention. That shouldn't be a big deal. Let's pick that up. Perfect. Okay, so as soon as we're done here in Greenland, I'm going to fly off to Iceland. Exactly the same strategy as before. And the reason I'm doing this, it doesn't really matter what country you start in, but by doing this, I never have to backtrack and worry about infecting Korea, uh, Greenland. So that's the only reason I do it. It really doesn't matter where you start, though. All right, the population is dead. Let's fly over to Iceland. Thank you. And begin devouring the population again. Grab the fourth level of Blood Rage. We're going to try to go to number five. Demonic Fury, which will max out our combat strength and uh, thus our DNA generation. Keep an eye, of course, on the population itself. Make sure that they're not all dead, or else your vampire will gradually start to starve. Wow, that's a lot of points generating a little bit faster than usual. I'm getting kind of lucky today. That's nice. Now, at any moment, we should see that Templar Industries are going to set themselves up. Uh, I'm not especially worried about them, but uh, just so that we are prepared, let's go ahead and grab a level of Lair. And also the Shadow Portal so that I can teleport between those lairs once I set them up. That will make it a little bit easier for me to deal with the Templar once they're ready to go. I'll also go ahead and grab one level of Dark Rituals so that I can heal myself uh, by devouring the population every time I have fought the Templar. Obviously, I don't want my vampire to die. That wouldn't be very good. Alright, at this point, Templar Industries is about to set themselves up. They will militarize across the world. And this is the spread that we are going to get. Now, this is obviously random. Uh, looks like we actually got, well, I was going to say we got quite lucky with most of them here in one central location, but I do see one base down here in New Zealand, which I'm not a very big fan of. We're going to probably want to deal with that first and then kind of work our way in toward the center so that we are close to a lair and we're able to fight very effectively. Uh, let's go ahead and grab an extra level of travel speed so I can get around pretty easily. I'm going to not worry about devouring all of Iceland right now, although we are very close. 
and instead fly down to Germany so I can set up, or actually I think I went to Poland, whoops, anyway, that's fine, set up a base somewhere here in Central Europe. Now I'm going to fly over to Russia, we might as well go ahead and kill them, like so, just devour the population, and we're going to see the health of the fort go down. Now do be aware that every time you do this, every other base is going to get reinforced, so uh, probably better to start with the easier ones that are far away and work yourself toward the center of the map. I'm going to go to Southeast Asia and set up a new layer because this is a pretty good central location for a lot of Asia, so let's do that. I'm going to start working my way over here toward Australia and then finally down to New Zealand where we can eat them. I'm not worried about DNA generation at this point. Um, you could if you are starting to run out, but there we go. I know it's dead because I see all these planes flying away. Let's teleport ourselves back up toward Poland, like so. And I'm going to spend a little time devouring the population so that I am able to heal up my vampire before I continue the fight. This is easily the most difficult part of the game because... Oh, there we go. You can see... Hang on. Before I go on to that point, you can see that they were sending a drone. Uh, drone. If you go to the lair where they are about to attack and attack the population, you automatically shoot down the drone. So, for example, if they're going to Southeast Asia, simply teleport over there, attack it, it will destroy the drone, and you don't have to worry about losing the lair. Anyway, as I was saying, this is easily the most difficult part of the game because it requires a bit of micromanagement. Um, once you're past this point, it's pretty much home free, but I'll show you guys how that works in just a minute. Let's finish this off in the Middle East. There we go. I'm going to go back up to Poland, and the only reason I'm teleporting back up to these bases is because I heal slightly faster when I am in a lair. Let's grab another level of Dark Ritual so I can heal up even faster. That will certainly be useful. And now I'm going to teleport down to Iran. And once in Iran, let's finish you off. It does not matter where these guys spawn. Don't worry too much about time. Just make sure that you don't die. Set up your lairs effectively and you'll be fine. But for the sake of this strategy, you know, it's not. you don't have to restart if you get an unlucky spread and they're all across different ends of the world. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to set up a new lair right here in Central Africa, right next to these last two targets. We're going to go to Angola. We're going to destroy this one, keeping an eye, of course, on my health. They are pretty well enforced. Okay, he's about to die, so let's go ahead and move back up, devour the population. And the important thing is, with two levels of heal, I can heal faster than they do. So I don't have to worry too much about a lot of wasted time if I decide uh, to back off and heal for a minute. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to heal. Okay, we're fine. Let's go to South Africa. This is the final base, and after that, the Templar should be defeated. I can... Whoa! That was a little bit fast there. I can see that they are moving up to Poland. Let's go ahead and teleport up there, attack the nation. The drone gets shot down. Let's attack again so I can heal. Perfect. Teleport and transfer to South Africa. If there was a rebalancing in the scenario, I think that it's that they made the Templar a little bit stronger, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, not a huge deal. Again, I can heal faster than they can. So let's go here. And just keep doing this as long as it takes. Do not die. That's the trick. As long as you don't die, you're going to be fine. Come on. Oop, don't miss that bubble. Okay, go here. I'm going to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. No, I'm not. I'm going to grab another level of travel speed. We have been generating plenty of DNA in the meantime, which is kind of funny. Not that it serves a lot of purpose for me right now, but even so. Okay, once again, please don't die, teleport, and just keep doing this. Again, this is the most frustrating part of the entire scenario. And they just got stronger in South Africa. Oh, that's what I wanted to see, absolutely. Don't worry about it, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Almost got him, come on. There we go, the Templar have been eradicated, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport back up here and devour, heal myself up. And now that the Templar are down, you have a lot of downtime. All I need to do is sit in a country and devour the population. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and fly over to Mexico or Central America, set myself up one more layer, just so that I have ease of access across all the different continents, nice central locations. I'm going to go ahead and move over to, let's say, the Caribbean, and just start devouring the population. And then all I'm going to do is walk away and do nothing. I mean, I'm going to pop bubbles, but you can just walk away. Nothing else matters but point generation. I'm going to go ahead and start zooming forward here. Uh, you want to generate about 600 DNA. Obviously, that's going to take a long time. So go make yourself a sandwich or something. It really doesn't matter too much. Um, the way that this is effectively going to work here is uh, we're trying to manipulate the score of the game so that we can get five stars. Now, exactly how this is calculated, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we do know that DNA generated does contribute to your score. 
We do know that uh, there is a time penalty. The longer the scenario takes, the less score that you're going to get. Uh, complexity of the disease matters, so on and so forth. Yet, what I've found is that as long as we sit here and get a minimum of 600 points, but we could sit here as long as you want and generate 2,000, doesn't really matter. The longer we sit here and generate DNA, the higher our score ultimately is going to be, and we can easily get five stars. I don't know what the implications are of that. Either we are generating DNA faster than the time penalty is hurting us, or there is a cap to the time penalty, so once we've taken a certain amount of time, we can just take as long as we want and it doesn't matter, or... And this is perhaps the most interesting theory. It could very well be that the time uh, penalty does not kick in until you've infected your first human. And if that's the case, then as long as we don't evolve Shadow Blessing, we can sit here as long as we want. It's just as soon as we get Shadow Blessing, that's when we want to infect the world as rapidly as possible. And that is why we're going to save up about 600 DNA, so that I will be able to evolve as many infectivity symptoms as possible on day one. Now that we have over 600 DNA, we are prepared to start the next phase. Obviously, we could sit here longer if we want to, but I find that 600 is a pretty good baseline to guarantee you will get five stars. So let's go ahead and go to symptoms and get the Shadow Blessing. My goal here is to get maximum infectivity as quickly as possible. So now that we have this, we're going to grab Nocturnal, Steroidal Boost, Pheromone Secretion, Photophobia, Hyperdontia, Jugular Bite, and the Shadow Slaves just so we have unlocked a win condition. Then we're going to get Muscular Hypertrophy and Mysticatory Tension. And uh, just because we can have a little bit of extra DNA by doing this, I'll go ahead and grab two levels of Blood Sacrifice. I'll also go ahead and pick up a Vampiric Awakening so that we will be able to generate a second Vampire and he will help spread the disease a little bit faster. In Transmissions, I'm going to grab a level of Air, 1, 2, and Water, 1, 2, and Extreme Bio Aerosol. One level of Droplets, one level of Fomites, Zoonotic Shift, three levels of Bats for the extra land transmission and mutation chance, Wolf for the rural regions, and Dogs for the urban regions. Then I'm going to go over to the urban uh, Abilities tree, Vampire's tree, sorry. Grab Cold Tolerance, Drug Tolerance, and Heat Tolerance so we have maximum resistance. And then finally I'm going to sink all of my points into Blood Gift and everything below. This means that so long as we are inside of a country, we will be automatically infecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people per day, which means we can hit critical mass in a country very rapidly. This is one easy way of spreading around the disease. With my extra DNA, I'm going to go ahead and grab Dark Pustules, Hypersensitivity, and just continue working my way down the Cure Resistance path over here, just so we can get a slightly better score and less Cure to worry about. Okay, our mere existence in New Zealand here, for example, has automatically infected everybody else. What we're going to do now is teleport to Southeast Asia, spend a day there and it should automatically be infected, go to uh, Poland, do the same thing, come on, Oop. boop, 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 and then teleport down to Africa, and then teleport over to Mexico. And this is why the layer placement is actually really important. It's not just so you can teleport around and uh, react quickly to the Templar and the, uh, the uh, Cure Labs, it's so that you have several different origin points for the disease so it can spread around the world very rapidly. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, transferring myself over to some of the more difficult nations to infect, like Canada, for example, Scandinavia, the United States, and so on, just so I can get the ball rolling a little bit faster. And Poland has already been fully infected because we spent a couple of days there. Mexico isn't fully infected, and so on. Pretty darn easy. I'm going to go to Brazil, again, just so I can get a good central location for all of Southeast Asia. Teleport up to Poland. Go to... Come on. Sweden, I guess. That doesn't really matter. Norway. Finland. And so on. The cold countries usually are some of the harder ones for you to infect. Looks like we already have some presence in Russia, but we'll be safe. Okay. And this is pretty much it for the scenario. You're just going to be microwing yourself around as quickly as possible. Make sure you get to all of the islands. Don't want to miss any of those. That would be pretty bad. Uh, when we have our second vampire, we'll be able to move around even faster with two people. It's just a lot of micromanagement. That's all it is. Now, I know that they set up a new lab here in Australia, so let's start working our way down here. Obviously, we do not want to leave any of those up. Every time we destroy one of these Genesis labs, though, we do set back the cure at least a little bit, so that is kind of helpful. You can see that they set up in Madagascar. We'll go over here next. There we go. Oh, we have a new uh, vampire here in... Uh, is it Sweden or Finland? Looks like it's in Sweden. Perfect. Okay. Let's teleport over to Mexico. I'm going to have this person sit in Canada for a little bit because Canada is going fairly slowly. What else are we missing? The UK and a bit of Western Europe. So that's an easy enough thing for us to fix. Teleport and boom. 
this is pretty much all that the strategy is. We're trying to move as quickly as we can to spread the entire vi the virus, and that's it. So, you can see that this strategy does kind of come in bursts. There's a short period of waiting while you generate some DNA, and then there's a very, a very intense moment where you're fighting against the Templar, then you sit around for a very long time, and then you micromanage like hell, and then bam, the scenario is going to be done. Let's go ahead and teleport with my second vampire, go to Spain, destroy this. Plague dogs, interesting, I've never gotten that achievement before. Okay, we destroyed all the labs, I think, let's go here. You can see that Spain is getting infected very rapidly. They've hit critical mass, let's go to Italy next, I think, and what is left? Japan? Is Japan pretty much good? Mostly. I think we're about done, to be honest. Let's just pay attention to the last few countries that remain. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport over to Japan. Destroy the lab in Italy. I think we're done, though. That should be it, and we haven't left behind any islands. Take a quick look-see. And that's it. Perfect! Alright, we're done! Nox Eternus has enslaved the world, we have corrupted all of humanity, and we should see that we get five stars very easily. There it is, 217,000 points. That is a phenomenal score right there, even though it took me 1,599 days. In any other scenario, that would be a crippling score and you could poss not possibly get five stars. But in our case, because we gamed the system and we waited and got a ton of DNA before starting up the disease, we find that we get a phenomenal score. And as far as I can tell, this only goes up the more DNA you have generated. You can sit around and generate 800, 2,000, 5,000 points. I don't care. As long as you don't let your vampire starve and you keep generating DNA, you should get a pretty darn good score. So that's my strategy to beat the Shadow Plague on Mega Brutal and get five stars every time. I do hope that you guys found this video helpful in some way. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. It really does help. Of course, leave a comment with any suggestions you might have. And subscribe if you are new. My name is Provis, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>